such a dork Captain in the show. Captain Katie Lotz. Woo! Mr. Brandon Ralph. constituted sort of new version of what the Time Masters were. And, uh, you know, the existential question for our guys is where do they fit into this new universe? Um, because clearly, we're not the best and brightest. Um, what? No. <laughs> most, most attractive, though. Most attractive. Mm -hmm. And you've got, so you've got the challenge of them repairing the damage that they've done, but it can't be legends without a villain. And what can you tell us about what sort of villainy we have coming forth? Oh, uh, well, I mean, last year we, we loved having our uh, 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 collection of bad guys, uh, and so we just want to keep leaning into that uh, idea and, 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 and drawing from uh, familiar faces, from, from uh, the various uh, DC shows. <laughs> uh, you know, we'd like to have uh, perhaps some non-human villains. I don't know, what else can we tease? Um, well... You saw in the, the teaser trailer that we're bringing Kawasa from the Vixen CW Seed series onto the show uh, as a villain. And yeah, we're really excited about that. And uh, obviously, we're really looking forward to the inevitable confrontation between uh, Maisie's character and uh, her grand great granddaughter. Um, and then we also have uh, another villain we can announce. Phil, you want to do it? Wait, 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 I forgot. Okay, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Just don't, don't tell them, okay? Whisper it. Okay, I'm going to whisper it. Okay. Neil McDonough. Oh, right. Yes. 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 Of course. Damien um, Dark. Yeah, last time we saw him, he was in Miami, 1987, wearing loafers without socks. Yes. So, yes, we'll be meeting a new version of, of Damien Dark, uh, a little less silly, uh, a little more formidable. Yeah, and uh, he is so pissed off about those loafers. Yeah, God damn, he is so he is out for blood, and he, he's coming for Sarah. Who's like, oh, God. Oh. don't don't put me in loafers ever again. He's coming for me. <laughs> for any, well, you know, in an aggressive way. <laughs> All right, so we've got Damien Dar coming back. What else can you do? Who else is coming back? Oh, and there is. Uh, Another gentleman who's returning, not not uh, as a member of our ball of evil. Right. We, we you know, obviously, uh, Captain Captain Cole. Is, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, you know, Mick Rory needs his his pal, but um, unfortunately, he's he's not going to get the version of uh, of his pal that he remembers. Uh, so yeah, it's it's going to be a we're we're obviously. Really excited to bring Wentworth back on the show uh, for a few episodes. Woo! Um, you know, but at the same time, we wanted to bring back uh, a different iteration of Mr. Snart. 
Uh, and oh. as, as we always say, chaos and merriment will ensue. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we loved having uh, Arthur get to play, uh, you know, a befuddled film student and an uh, evil revolutionary war general. <laughs> so uh, whenever things get uh, too boring, we can always uh, have somebody uh, come back in a completely different way, which is the great thing about our show. Well, he's also coming back to a different Mick, because by the end of the season, he had developed a bit of a heroic side. Tom, how was that? That was what? How was, how, was, how was getting Nick to grow up a little bit and take a, become a little bit more responsible? Tom, um, look, uh, it's just a, a, a process of uh, Nick being surrounded by people that his team and the, and the ship that uh, um, he's starting to realize that they really love him. It's, uh, as I said before, it's his first real family. And uh, you know, he's starting to evolve. He's becoming a, I mean, he's, he's got more bad than, than good, which is good, um, but he's slowly evolving from the, the caveman kind of area. <laughs> um, Nick and Maisie, you guys came aboard early last season, and let's give them a round of applause for fitting in so um, How was it joining a cast that had already gotten their sea legs on this, the Wave Rider? Uh, it was easy, only because everyone was really welcoming and kind, and everyone like embraced us. Uh, but it was interesting because like we're all very different people. And we were talking about this with Katie the other day. We're all different points of our lives, but we... Thanks, love you too. And, um, <laughs> but we all have this really great coexistence, and it's, it's awesome. And, uh, and they could not have been more welcoming of me. And then yeah, I, I baked him a pie. Aww. The fact that we got to split up a lot last season was also great because we no. really saw the dynamics of the individual couples, which is kind of how our whole relationship. Yeah, it was like blind dating with. Literally, your, every uh, time, every episode, we went off with different pairs. So. Yeah, I was off with Katie, and I was like, oh, I was on a date with Katie. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I'm on a date with Brandon, which, by the way, worked out well. <laughs> and it just, we all dated till we found our relationships. Right. Um, should we be shipping Nate, uh, Nate and Amaya? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a positive relationship for both of them, but it's it's slightly trouble, especially because Amaya's got her past that she knows she has to go back to at some point. So I think she's going to have to really come to terms with does she stay or does she go, and that's a big thing that she starts with at the beginning of next season. Okay. Um, and also, I want to congratulate Maisie. Uh, you have been much like Brandon. Um, been immortalized as a Lego superhero mini oh, yeah. <laughs> We've given that exclusively at the Lego booth here at Comic Con, so we got you one. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. I'm not passing this down. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet you can get one. Uh, you'd be surprised. Actually, last year it was Brandon who hooked me up. <laughs> I could not get one. I needed Brandon to get me one. <laughs> All right, let's talk about Brandon. Brandon, poor Ray, this guy cannot get a win. He's, you know, he's always the one that gets dumped on. He, like, tries to reach out to Sarah. She shuts him down. You know, he's got Kendra. They get engaged. He flies off with Hawkman. His suit gets blown up. Like, is this guy ready to be just... You know, is this guy ready to, to kind of change things up? Yeah, writers. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I was thinking, I, as you were going through that, like, thanks. <laughs> I, I think I brought, really? that up. I brought that up at the end of season one and season two happened, and I just decided not to say anything in season three because I've just accepted it. But, you know, uh, I guess it's kind of that the nice guy finished last in a way, um, which I don't believe is true, by the way. But um, we exemplify that a little bit in the show. But I think the thing about Ray is the last doesn't have to be last unless you view it as last. So, you know, Ray kind of, I think, always tries to find the, the positive and the learning experience out of everything. And that's what you have to do in life because you're not always going to win. So you got to get good at not winning and figure out how to be okay with that, right? So, Ray's just well practiced at that. Yeah. Good job. Aww. Great answer. Thanks. Great answer. Great answer. Well done. Well done. Well done. Spin it into gold. Guys. And now, Katie, the captain, take it over. Take the reins. How fun is it to be sitting in the chair? Hello, Katie. Aw, I love you too. Uh, it feels good. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. I like telling people what to do. And, and, and Sarah has evolved so much as well, and you had some gorgeous stuff at the end of the season, especially with Katie Cassidy, where, yes, where I feel like Sarah really stepped into her power. Um, going forward, 
have you guys realized like Sarah is now a formidable leader? Have you guys? Yeah. Do you, do you know my leadership skills? <laughs> I feel like Ray took her for real in, in season two. I mean, he was on board. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so. <laughs> you know, they might not sound that enthusiastic, but they do. No, you, it's, been, it's been good so far. Uh, I think it's a great dynamic, having uh, you know, a lady you know, in charge of four cavemen, five, five cavemen. <laughs> I, I think it really works. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, Tala, what can you tell us about this new character that's coming on? Because this is a big deal. It is a big deal. I'm really excited. Um, her name is Zari. She's from the future, the near future, 2030. Um, she is a powerful woman who speaks her mind. Um, she's a hacker, which is, I think, very cool. Um, and she's going to meet the legends, I think, in, 20, in 2030, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, in the future. And, and she's sort of seen the fallout from 2017. Um, and she's sort of in this sort of dystopian future. And I think they, they're going to butt heads at first. And um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that unfolds and how she becomes part of the team. Who is she most going to butt heads with? Who is she most going to butt heads with? I think it's going to be Ray's positivity. Oh. <laughs> Would you say that perhaps when they come together, they spark? Oh, I don't know. Oh, maybe. Um, but I do think that she she thinks that rather than just fixing um, the future or, or fixing history, that you should improve history because she's seen how bad things can become. So I think she, they don't quite see eye to eye on that. And she might, she might be a little glass half empty. I don't know. Okay. Uh, producers, it feels like this is a very important character and move on your part. Why is, it, why is this the time to bring this character in? I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's... We need to change the dynamic uh, on, on our ship because otherwise, I think it, you know, the dynamics get a little too staid and, and, and fixed. And uh, you know, we, we look at our guys like uh, a family, and you know, the real drama comes when you sort of destabilize that with with uh, with a new person. Um, and yeah, I mean, the the last year again, we were like the time custodians just fixing things, and like Tala said. Uh, you know, we're, we're realizing philosophically that maybe there's more than we could be doing as a, as a team. And it, it's, you know, we end every season with our guys feeling really great about themselves. Uh, and, and so the trick is every season we kind of have to break them down and, and, and give them something, you know, room to grow. And, and she's the one who changes things and, and, and makes them look at themselves and challenges what their purpose is. Uh, you know, to, to do more than... than than Rip and his time bureau. Um, you know, it's uh, you know, it, it, it's you know, it's, it's great to bring new people. Hey, friends. Yeah. Friends. Yeah. You're looking good, man. This is what I was watching on the monitor. Yeah. Dom and I were sitting here watching. Good yeah. looking, dude. Go back to France. Let's go back to France. 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 Not us, France. Yeah, we've got friends, friends, and Victor. Um, one of the nicest things, yeah, ours, one of the nicest things that has been uh, part of the show is watching you guys really click into a very caring friendship. It's not even like a father-son thing, it's these guys actually care about each other as friends now. Um, when you guys don't get to work together, do you feel like, oh, I, I, I miss my buddy? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Like we 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 get on like a house on fire. <laughs> oh, I get it. I get it. No, but, yeah, like it's always it's always kind of kind of strange when we're not we're not together. Man, lovely time. Yeah, I love friends. Aww. No, it's interesting because uh, Aww. it's uh, you know uh, he you know I was all, I was started out as the you know the the, the, the mentor the, the the wise old man. And, and then, of course, uh, what's, what's been wonderful about doing this is finding that, you know, Martin f discovers quite rapidly that he doesn't know what he thinks he knows. And, and, and Franz and uh, Je Jefferson becomes his teacher. And uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's interesting in life how that happens in our real life as well. Because I'm, 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 I can be so tedious about the way I 
you know, do things. <laughs> and friends will just say, hey, lighten up, lighten up. That's not. And uh, bro, 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 calm Chill. down. And uh, but that's that's a that's a very surface thing. But actually, it's a, it's a very true dynamic. And I think uh, so. So whenever we get to those scenes, honestly, it's so easy. We we won't, we we always look forward to just our two two character scenes because it's it's effortless and it's a pleasure to to do. And uh, and acting, as you all know, is about res responding to the person. You're, you're acting with in friends is masterful, and uh, for a young actor, it's it's quite annoying, really, how good he is. Hey, Phil, do you want to uh, tell Victor and Franz what they'll be doing in uh, 306? Six. Yeah. Uh -oh. Well, we, we have a, a concept, um, right. which we may or may not be able to afford. Uh, we, we have a new character called Firestein. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> This was so... So it's a Freaky Friday sort of situation. Mm -hmm. um, so get ready to impersonate one another. <laughs> I had some questions uh, from Twitter people. One of them was, will we ever meet Ray's brother, Sydney? Oh, we, we have talked about this. Uh, actually, we have a really cool storyline um, uh, planned for season three. We definitely want to do it in season three. We, have, you know, we've talked to Brent about this. Uh, counting on it now, you're talking about it so much. Uh, what? I'm counting on it now. I know, I know, I know. But because, uh, you know, as we've established in episode 110, Sydney looks just like Brandon, so Brandon has to, you know, play two parts. Uh, we're very excited about that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Right. I've never done that before. Yes. <laughs> um, were any of you jealous that you didn't get to be in the Flash musical episode other than Victor? Yes. <laughs> Did you immediately go to your bosses the next day and say, all right, when's ours? No, they didn't, thank God. <laughs> No, would you like to go to your bosses right now and ask where the are? I would like to do yes. this episode. I don't think it's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest, like my philosophy, and I, I think I've said this on Arrow too, it's like, if you're going to do a concept episode, I as a writer and a showrunner have, have a lot more uh, appetite for doing a concept episode that is in a concept-y in a different way mm -hmm. than another show is done. You know, I have Flash did the musical episode, and they did it, they did it great. I, I don't think, there's not a lot of uh, percentage in trying to top that. Right. You know, I'd rather, we've got some cool ideas for concept the episodes that I, I'm not going to pitch here, I'm going to be good, but uh, um, we've got one that I'm really excited about if we can pull it off. Not going to, no, I can't, I can't reveal it, I can't, I'll be killed. Various people. All right, okay, so. Sorry. Talking about the villains, um, why, why erase Eobard and not Malcolm or Damien? I know you had to keep Malcolm alive because then he had to possibly blow up an arrow. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really, you know, it's a continuity thing. Um, you know, you can't, you know, remove Malcolm from the timeline. Um, you can't remove Damien from the timeline. Uh, Eobard, you know, we actually, we talked a lot in the room about whether or not uh, Eobard should die. And there was a lot of back and forth and debate and everything. And at the end of the day, where we really came out was there had to be some kind of major consequence to at least one member of the Legion of Doom uh, as a result of their actions in season two. Um, but we love, we love Matt Lesher. How good is Matt? He's awesome. Yeah, it, yeah he's <laughs> He called me up after, after we wrapped him, and he's like, I just, I'm just sad to be, you know, off these shows. I'm like, dude, like, have you paid attention? There's not a single character on any of the shows who's been killed off, who hasn't come back in some way, shape, or form, including you. He had already died on Flash once. So, um, Katie died like six times on four shows. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know. It's funny, every time, every time Katie died, Katie's character dies, we have to give her a, a raise. Okay. Right. She gets to renegotiate. Wait, did I miss that memo? Talk <laughs> <laughs> oh, to your agents. It's, it's, it's in there. It's, in, it's a clause in the contract. Um, there was so much great fun this season. I feel like this, was, this is a show that truly emulates what a comic book series would be. Like a print comic book series. Um, you guys got to do so many cool things and shoot in some pretty rough conditions. I heard your finale was 
Actually, that battlefield was covered in snow the day before you filmed and after. They had to take a blowtorch and melt all the snow <laughs> so it didn't look like it was freezing out there. And, and if you're shooting with all the doubles, you just have to understand that it's the most tedious process imaginable. Like, you, you have to, it's like, it, it takes ten times as long as it would do to shoot a normal scene, and just keeping track of who was who, and who was where, and which character was from which episode. Like, I mean, we would write scenes and have to have, like, action figures just to keep track of who was in the scene. Uh, so yeah, no small miracle, and uh, yeah. Um, Nick, when you signed on, were you aware that Nate would eventually get powers, or were you worried that I, you were going to be like the Xander? No, no, no. <laughs> I, knew. I couldn't say anything, because, you know, Mark and Phil give you that whole speech about not saying anything, or you're going to ruin everything, and don't ruin everything by saying anything, and so then everybody asks questions, you're like, I, I hope, I don't know, but I'm glad. The powers are fun, the, the CGI is great, uh, our, our guys do great job putting together the steel uh, skeleton. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was super stoked about it. Especially because Mark showed me a drawing at our first meeting. He, and he, I think it was like a Mark move. Like he took the drawing and like he put it on the coffee table. He was like, oh, this is what the guy's going to look like. <laughs> and then there's that's a awesome guy all made out of steel. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool, man. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. um, for the original Legends, were any of you concerned, or did you feel a weird sense of rivalry when the Justice Society showed up? Yeah, they had such an, atti such an attitude, like they were awesome, so much better than us. <laughs> yeah, I think a little bit, they were so polished. Um, so, yeah, I, I, think, I think we actually took offense to it, but they were, they were awesome people. We also, and, and, and then Macy joined our team, so we must yeah, have been cooler. I got stuck. Yeah. Yeah. We, we encouraged it. We, we were not calling them the Justice Society of America. We were calling them the Justice Society of Potential Replacements. Oh. No. Just keep well, damn. See? <laughs> Who on the panel here is the one that's the most adept at keeping track of all the time that you've gone through and the mistakes that they've made in history? Personally? No. No. Let me show. Or personally. I think friends. Yeah. Friends, right. I always say, where am I and what am I doing now? <laughs> he always knows. <laughs> and, and, and Katie? No, Brandon's pretty good at Brandon's it. Brandon's really good. Brandon's like, yeah, he brings it in from like the other shows. Yeah, yeah, like, totally. you know, he, Brandon ties in during scenes like, mm, this doesn't work because Flash set that up into Arrow. Yeah, he's product good. Into here, which means this product shouldn't even be in the shop. Yeah, I'll be like, wow. Brandon, what's going on in this scene? <laughs> He'll tell him what's going on. Katie, have you kept track of all of the historical figures that Sarah has flirted with? <laughs> because I love me Sarah showing up and just like shooting a look or like eyeing up a World War I nurse. Yeah. I mean, Sarah's, she's just attracted to the person. She doesn't care if you're like the Queen of France or like some nurse working nine to five. Like. She's, she's just about the person, you know? She's all love is love. She's got a, lo a lot of love to give. Yeah, you know, she's just enlightening women left and right. <laughs> <laughs> um, will we see Gideon again? Aww. In the flesh, you mean? E yes. E uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we love Amy Pemberton, who plays Gideon. Uh, actually, you're going to see... In the season premiere, oh, yeah. there's kind of an inside joke uh, that Amy cooperated, uh, played along with us uh, to do. So uh, you'll be seeing you'll be seeing more Gideon. We love. We haven't come up with a better name for this, but we keep calling her Flesh and Blood Gideon, um, which is not a good name. Yeah, no. Uh, we have to do better than that. Um, but uh, we love live action Gideon. What live action Gideon? Real Gideon. Um, real Gideon. So so we have to you know we have to bring her back. We we really enjoy having Amy. Actually, I mean, not just her disembodied voice on the show. Nice. Um, we're going to go to audience questions, so if you guys want to line up back there, we'll get those. Um, one of the Twitter questions was, how is Sarah going to react to ever, if she ever sees Black Siren? I want to know, too. I don't know. I think it would be really hard because you see this person and you're like, you're my sister. And there's so much love there. 
and, and all the pain and everything, and to see that person who's your sister and it not be your sister, mm. I, I, I don't even know how, how you deal with that. And like, is, is she gone? Like, Black Siren, like there's no Laurel Lance in there. Like, it's just Black Siren, is that how it works? Well, it's, you know, she's a, a different Laurel Lance. <laughs> Uh, you're okay. Good. Um, she's a different Laurel Lance. She's, she's you know, uh, a Laurel Lance of a parallel universe. And that's actually uh, a big question. Um, not to turn this into the arrow panel, but um, that's, that's a big, you know, piece of the story that we have to tell with, you know, the new iteration of Laurel, which is how much of the Laurel that you love. know and love uh, is, is in there, in his there. Maybe I'll just be like, you look my, like my sister close enough. Uh, I'll take it. Alright, we've got a question back there. Uh, my name is Henley, and uh, you might have alluded to this, so I hope we're not on the same track, but you are bringing Gideon back, and one of my favorite things about this show is the Casual 4th Wall Break game with all the prison break references. So, since the Arrow panel hasn't happened yet, and we don't know if Lex Adoyag is still around, you did say Inside Joke. I was wondering if we're going to get a Rami meets Gideon. I maybe during the crossover if there's an opportunity. Look, I, I we love those. We love our inside jokes. And Tom, you've got one. You got another prison one coming up. I do. Out in three uh, three. <laughs> right. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that's right. I do. Actually, you know. What? Actually, you know what? Actually, this is my fault. This is my bad. You haven't been sent three of them. We haven't that's tried. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It shoots to our <laughs> Yeah, next question. Go ahead. Hi. Hello. My name is Julie. Uh, my question is, will Captain Cold be only brought back from his uh, past, or will he be able to alter um, his uh, way he returned or brought back from the dead? I'm going to go with C, none of the above. Ooh. <laughs> That's a great reaction. Answer, answer, answer. Oh. Hello, I'm Lena. Um, yeah. This, this better be what I'm hoping you're gonna ask. I, uh, well, I mean, first off, Nick, I love Minority Report and Arthur Watson. <laughs> um, thank you for bisexual representation on your show. I was wondering if we would get to see more of the bisexual side of Sarah's relationships or any new bisexual characters come onto the show. Well, I mean, it's, it's definitely time for someone to, to uh, I think it's time for Sarah to maybe settle down or at least, you know, ha have a relationship that's uh, more than just a, a roll in the hay. And, 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 and uh, it's hard when you're traveling through time, uh, you know, it, there, you sort of have, uh, there's someone in every port, but this season we're really <laughs> looking to... to... <laughs> I, I, will, I will say this, it's, it's definitely been a priority of ours this season to re-establish um, Sarah's bisexuality. Um, I think if you were to just watch season two, it, it would be very easy to get the sense, apart from like the line in, in 2.13 uh, from Ray about her being bisexual, um, it would have been easy to lose sight of the fact that she's bisexual. So we are, uh, it's a big important thing for us this year to, to reestablish that aspect, aspect of her character. A lot of people are like, she's only been with women, or why is she not with a man now? And I think the thing with Sarah, like, she's not trying to fit in any label. Like, she's not trying to labor, label herself. Like, if she's into women at that time, it's not like, oh, well, you're not bisexual anymore. It's like, I am what I am. And that's, for her, it'll change and it'll be what it's trying to be without being, forcing it to be something. I think for her, it's all about being fluid and just being true to herself. Hi. Hi, my name is uh, Victor Medina, and I'll, uh, sorry, 
What was it like for Jefferson and Sarah to go into Rip's mind and fight their darker selves? That was a really fun episode. Um, yeah, I loved shooting that. Um, uh, any scenes, A, that I have where it's just me and Kate is awesome because we, we're really good friends. We're like best of buddies and stuff. Aww. So, yeah, I mean, that's big sis right there. So, yeah, um, that was super fun. And playing a dark Firestorm is always awesome. So yeah, I loved it. Nice. Um, before we go, I, oh, we've got it. That's awesome. Um, just the, the previous question, uh, has there been any discussion about Matt Ryan or Constantine? <laughs> There's going to be a discussion. What's that? A discussion? Has there been any discussion? We're discussing it now. Okay. Uh, I can't help you with it. <laughs> you're, you're doing a really good job of dodging this one. Okay. Uh, I was going to. Over to you, Mark. Oh, God, no. You're doing great. Uh, we've talked to Matt. Um, and, and Matt's Matt's currently busy doing something right now. Um, but uh, we've had really good conversations with Matt. All right. Woo! Go ahead. First, I just want to say, Katie, I love you so much. Um, so this is a question for like all of you. So what time period that the Legends went to was the most fun for you to film? Camelot. <laughs> I think the Wild West. That was awesome. Yeah, same. Wild West. Yeah. Like, like riding horses is always super fun. I liked the, well, I always like any episode that Victor sings in. <laughs> and I really liked my outfit that I got to wear when you sang the Edelweiss song, and I had that, like, whatever, shrug off my jacket. That was, that I, I loved that time, uh, you know, in the, in the Nazi nightclub, I was, uh, <laughs> It was, yeah. Singing Edelweiss, it was, uh, I love that one. Too. And I love your costume. Thank you for dressing up. You look great. Amazing. Anyone else? Any else time periods? I had fun with Al Capone. Mm -hmm. Al Capone episode was fun. I think that's when we got to do fun stuff. We always do fun stuff. Yeah, we do a lot of fun stuff. <laughs> Make it fun. <laughs> okay, we've got time for one quick one, so go ahead. No. Everybody enjoys a sweet ride. Um, and when, as time travelers, are you going to have the DeLorean on an 80s show? Very good last question. Phil's a huge Back to the Future fan. <clears throat> the, the first one. But the first uh, one. we are having an 80s episode. Uh, yes. Number four. Yeah, number we're we're going to be going back to a sort of Amblin, Spielberg, uh, sort of... Uh, Stranger Things. Yeah. We're, and we're, we're going to investigate Ray Palmer's uh, childhood a little bit and try to understand, Ooh. you know, what formed the man. Why he's so bizarre. Yeah. We're going to meet your mom. Uh oh. Awesome. What's up, Miss Palmer? <laughs> <laughs> you keep her away from Katie. <laughs> Keep her away from Nick. <laughs>